Welcome to our next lesson in Vue.js. Today we're mainly going to use Visual Studio Code just a little bit, just a quick editor. You could do this with Visual Studio Professional or whatever else editor you wanted, but we'll be using IIS Express. Uh, where we use Visual Studio, we don't totally think about sometimes how IIS Express is running in the background, and you can do some neat things at the command line to uh, pull some neat stuff off, and uh, we're going to do a little bit of that today. And then we're going to get into the classes of JavaScript and importing and exporting just a little bit. So let's get uh, going here. I had originally recorded this once before, and uh, uh, windows were popping back and forth, and I think if we can get both windows up here, not jump back and forth, it's going to make it smoother for you. So the first thing I'm going to do is just drop to command prompt many ways to do it but I like to type CMD and I was zooming in and out earlier but I, th I think it's clear enough that we do not need to do that so what I'm going to do here is simply go back and make a directory for myself uh, make directory view uh, lesson maybe so there we have a new directory I'm going to change into that directory and of course if I take a directory of that directory it's empty so I'm going to do code dot and I think the dot helps expand the menu bar to the left but code will just the command code itself will get you in there remember that's Visual Studio code uh, pops it up that's what code does so now we pop him and I'm going to if it ever gets here uh, make that be about half of our screen get rid of this one And just before we even start, I'm going to go ahead and get Chrome launched. And I'm going to get him over here where we can see him a little bit. He's not as important as, or we don't need as much of him really as code. But first thing I'm going to do is just make a new web page. We want to be making kind of a web page that we're going to serve up here. I'm going to call it index.html, as you can see. Let's just give it a little title, like H1, a view lesson. Now, you could open that, as you know, there's file. You can file open in IS Express, but a lot of these new things will not work. You'll get these cores errors, and I think we mentioned cores in our last video, <clears throat> cross-origin resource sharing. Best to just toss them up from a server to save fighting that problem that you sometimes get from files sometimes your imports and exports not gonna work so toss it from a web server and you might find everything's working your command wasn't wrong or your code it was the cores and stuff fighting you so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go to terminal new terminal uh, nothing's serving my page yet and notice down here uh, I'm using the default command prompt thing here I had bash there earlier and Run an IS Express here gave me a little problem. You can run it from the command prompt. You can just jump out and do it. But for my convenience, I set this back to command prompt. <clears throat> and I'm going to use IIS Express right here. So I'm going to say IIS Express slash path colon. And this uh, thing I did, we called it view lesson, didn't we? So notice that. Uh, we're launching iExpress from the command line. We're telling it what path we want to serve our site from. Let's see what happens here. Okay, you'll see down there it says it started. And if you notice, let's see, I think I'm kind of covering you up there. Let me move me up here. Something that just bit me is you're going to get an icon down here. Notice you have IIS Express and you can see what sites are running and you can exit sites and things like that. This will work great the first time you do it and if you're in the same session and you try to do it in a different directory it's going to stomp over top the port and you can stop the site here or you can go fight config files and things but just notice you have an icon that shows up in your bar and you can like stop sites and then start your other site and things. Just a little heads up. Okay, so let's think where we're at now. We are running our IIS. It started on 8080, the port. We're going to go to Chrome, and we're going to look at our 8080. Now watch this. Just default. IIS Express out of the box will 
wires up its images and everything and, and gives you a nice page, but we want to look at our index.html page, don't we? Bam! There we are. We have started IS Express, pointed it to a folder, and we're serving up an index.html page. So we're ready to move on, and we want to introduce classes. Remember we talked a lot about view that a lot of your pain is not view itself. Uh, it really simplifies what you're doing once you learn what's going on. It's the tools that we didn't learn for the last half a decade and skills that are <clears throat> missing that are hurting us. So classes is one of the things around 2015 started getting added to JavaScript. And so let's make a class here. I'm going to go to my uh, view lesson there. I'm going to add and I'm going to call it employee.js. I want to make this class file. And I'm going to just simply say class employee. I'm going to give him close brackets, begin close. And I'm going to give him a constructor. And I want to pass in the name of my employee when I build him. And then I'm going to say this.name equals name. Now I'm intentionally leaving some things out here and we'll build our pieces. Uh, so if I go back now to my index.html, the first thing I want to do is I want to run my script command. So I, you know, so I can run JavaScript in a web page. And let's try it here. It turns out you have to import and export classes in uh, in JavaScript. Let's say import, uh, can't even remember what I type, but employee from, I'll say dot dot slash employee.js. Well, guess what? It isn't going to work. Let's hit F12 here, get our tools up, get the console, F12. Can't use import outside of a module. So here's one thing. Anytime you're doing this in script, playing around, you'll notice in view all this is taken care of you. Once you build your project, you don't even think about these things. But we're building these pieces so we know what's going on. In a raw HTML page, I need to tell it's a module or it won't work. Well, guess what? Still not fixed. Employee does not have a export named default. This is very neat. We're going to learn in this lesson about a default export. Well, the first thing is I didn't export anything from this class. I need to say export class employee to get it out of that, to make it, if you will, public where it can be accessed from another file. So now I'm saying import employee, and that is uppercase there. Let me flip back again. Employee. Still not going to work. Let's hit F5. Got an error. Doesn't have an export default. Watch this. This this weird. Let's let's go ahead and make the default. I'm flipping my brain which way I want to show you. First of all, I'm going to say default class employee. Hey, this is what I want you to export from this class by default. And I believe she's going to work now. Woohoo! No errors. It knows about my class. And let's, let's do something ornery. Let's use it. There is a new let command and constant command in JavaScript in the last half decade. And I'm going to, for now, just say let. You can still use var. But let e equal a new employee. I'm going to call him Rick. And then to see if it's working, I'm going to say console.log e dot that employee's name. I saved. I'm going to hit F5 here in Chrome, and hey, it put out Rick. So I'm using my class, if you will. But let, let's examine what's happening here again. Default class employee, here's upper employee, it took it. Well, one would think, let's take that back. We know we had an error before. I'm resaving, hitting F5, there's no default. Watch this. When I go back to this page, and I add these, I'll call them squiggly brackets around employee, it will work. Isn't that interesting? So this is a very important lesson.
there is a you can only have one default export from a class. If you have it, you don't need those squiggly brackets. You can grab a hold of that default export. It is case sensitive still. But matter of fact, let's do that. Let's let's see if I put default back and I'm uppercase, I'm going to kill my squigglies and go lowercase, expecting the default here. Nope, it's case sensitive still. So our lesson is, again, you can have a default export. And with it, you do not need the squiggly. It's a special notation for the one defaulted export object from a class. But you can also have other objects in there or classes that aren't the default export. Let, let's look at that. That's what that squiggly notation is all about. Let's say you made a class. Let me add a new one that yeah, I'm going to throw a bunch in there. Let's call it library.js. I'm lazy and I don't want to make separate class files. So I'm going to put my uh, employee class in there. I'm going to export again a class called vehicle. And for this one, my constructor, I want to pass in the make of that. And I'll say this dot make equals make. And I'll go ahead. Let's show you the notation for a function. Let's say I want to drive my car. I'll have a function in him. Notice don't need the word function from it. Brackets. And I'll say in this one, I'll go ahead and do cons console again and say you are driving a plus and I'll put uh, this dot make got to remember that's gonna bite you somewhere remembering that this driving this dot make so we're exporting our class let's save that let's go back to our booger and remember we have changed what our file name is now we're doing from our library import employee Will that work or not? Well, hopefully in your brain, I might be going a little quick, but you got to be thinking about whether I had the default export in there, don't you? And I believe we left it. I believe it was uppercase. Let's see what happens here. I'm going to refresh. Still working. And we look, indeed, we still had default on that. What about vehicle? Let's go look here. So now we get into seeing this default notation plus another class we're wanting to pull out if you will manually and what I have to do is that squiggly and say by the way I also want vehicle out of here and so not only am I going to do an employee I'm going to say let V equal new vehicle and uh, you know what I'm going to upgrade I was doing Fords before I'll do a Lexus and then I'm going to drive my vehicle let's see what happens here on the Chrome refreshing, I've got my employees still working, and I'm driving a Lexus. Both the default class, employee, and the one I manually imported are working. Let's throw one more in there just for a concept. Let's just call this one a person. Let's call it a person class, and we'll give him a name to, whoops, I needed my constructor, didn't I? Give him a name, same as employee, basically that this dot name equals the name. So now I have three classes in that one library. And of course, I'll show you here. Let's, let's try to grab person here. Will that work or not? Well, things claiming I don't like it pretty much tells you it isn't going to work. So if we He's not the default, is he? I can only have one default. He has to be in this manual section. Will this work or will I get an error? I'm going to refresh right now. Working. So th this is kind of, if I've got it right, the term called tree shaking, where you can, if you will, nitpick or only grab what you want. So I don't want vehicle now. Let's say I only want person. Let P equals new person. We'll call him Bob. And then we'll say, just for ornament, console.log p.name. It should tell me Bob, shouldn't it? Or refresh, Rick and Bob. So we've seen that we can tree shake. They've got all these wonderful new words for us to learn, don't they? 
only the classes I want out of that library, if you will. The benefit of that is these tools, these compilers, transpilers, they bundle, they optimize. And if you do wise coding like this where you only get what you need, when it builds the prod version specifically, it will be minimized. It will not have anything more than you need. So let's see here real quick. Do we have anything else? About the only thing I'm going to mention here was uh, there are several uh, types of module. Well, that's the exact phrase. There are several types of modules in JavaScript. And I'm going to hit an add here just so I have almost like a notepad. Notes.txt. And I don't want to give you the nerdy detail. I don't. There's so much for us newbies, myself included, we're grasping here, new, that hate to bog you down. But there was it possibly one of the first things that came out was a notation called CommonJS. And it was really made for the back end. And you've noticed that requiring. And if you, you can't do it on your client side. If you do it, you have to use a transpiler to get your code to run. So you don't really need to worry about it. Just be aware of it, that there was this module type called CommonJS. And somewhere along the line, that, by the way, was synchronous, which, as you know, means kind of system kind of halted while it loads that. They came up with another one. And there's various notations, but it was called AMD asynchronous module definitions. And uh, obviously, loaded asynchronously made for the client side not really made for the back end side. And there's one of many uh, notations for it. Well, time keeps marching down, and apparently I'm only getting part of this now. Hey, let me grab it here. There was a universal one apparently came out, module type, <clears throat> and it kind of had the notation to handle both uh, common JS and asynchronous. So there was yet a third. And then finally, thank goodness, what we'll call ESM, which stands for the ES module, trying, trying to become, and maybe it has, the JavaScript standard. They're like, for heaven's sake, can't we just use import and export? So that's kind of what you're seeing. Just be aware of history. You're going to see other notations, libraries and builders happening that take care of some of these things but hopefully our life will be simple again where the tools have evolved that we're just using the final JavaScript standard notation uh, hopefully and not have to fight some of these previous things so just be aware of them. that's a another thing is uh, there's so many tools and libraries and things building that you're going to bump into a lot of things happening that you don't know all the pieces that are kind of wired up and building and stuff, but uh, a lot of magic is happening under the hood. Other libraries you use may be using some of these others and end up getting compiled, I'll use that term, into whatever is needed for your browser. We'll stop here for now on classes. I hope that this at least gives you an introduction to importing and exporting. You have classes, one default possible. You can tree shake and only grab what you need. We'll go on from here as soon as possible.